Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you to this webinar. Let me start by saying this. Farmers and agricultural extension workers are being exposed to so many tools and so many techniques that is never too much to review that we need agriculture based on science. And our topic for today is about applying a science-based nutrient decision support tool in enhancing the productivity and profitability of one of the most important crops in the Philippines. The title of this webinar is Enhancing Cassava Productivity and Profitability Using Nutrient Expert Cassava Beta Version in Pampanga and Batangas. Cassava production and the area harvested in the Philippines are relatively small compared to that of Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Cambodia. In 2017, production of cassava in the country was reported to be 2.81 million tons, while area harvested was 235,000 hectares. The average fresh tuber yield of cassava was only 12 tons per hectare, which is very low compared to the average cassava fresh tuber yield in Laos, which is 33 tons per hectare, the highest in Southeast Asia. Cassava has a huge potential for rural industrial development and improving farmers' income. It is an ideal crop for food security. In fact, 15 million Filipinos eat cassava for breakfast and lunch instead of rice. That's according to Dr. Dam of the Department of Agriculture. Aside from being a drought-tolerant crop, cassava can also grow year-round in low-fertility soils. It is also an income generating crop that can help alleviate poverty because of its many uses. It can be used as human food, in animal feeds, and many industrial products, such as the following textile, paper, adhesives, cosmetics, beer, malt, pharmaceuticals, and bioethanol. The increase in demand of cassava for food, feed, and industrial purposes drives the need to increase its production. Elisha Kali estimated that yield of cassava could reach 90 tons per hectare with optimal growing environment and good management practices. This could mean that cassava production could be improved by improving crop management practices, specifically nutrient management. Aside from using high-yielding varieties, good quality planting materials, ensuring sufficient moisture, proper plant spacing, and pest and disease control for better cassava production, optimal nutrient management is also necessary to ensure that the crop is provided with the nutrients needed for its growth and development. The application of adequate rates of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium based on crop requirement at critical growth stages is important to achieve optimum yields, minimize nutrient losses, and prevent soil degradation. However, a study in the Philippines for a total of 450 farmers, revealed that fertilizer application to cassava is minimal, ranging from 0 to 109 kilograms of nitrogen per, per hectare, 0 to 26 kilograms P2O5 per hectare, and 0 to 29 kilograms of K2O per hectare. Different varieties of cassava have different nutrient requirements, and growing the crop in the same field from year to year 
without fertilizer application could lead to nutrient mining. Site-specific nutrient management is a set of nutrient management principles which aims to supply a crop's nutrient requirements tailored to a specific field or growing environment. It aims to account for indigenous nutrient sources and apply fertilizer at optimal rates and at critical growth stages. That is to meet the deficit between the nutrient needs of a high yielding crop and the indigenous nutrient supply. The steps in SSNM are as follows. Step 1. Establish a yield target. This means that you must provide the crop's total needs to achieve the yield target. Step 2. Effectively use existing nutrients. It could come from the indigenous nutrient supply, such as those coming from irrigation water, crop residues, soil, and manure. And step 3. Fill the deficit between total needs and the indigenous nutrient supply. Results of SSNM trials for Cassaba project by the University of the Philippines Los Baños and the International Plant Nutrition Institute were used to develop the better version of nutrient expert cassava. This is a nutrient decision support tool that enables crop advisors and extension workers to rapidly develop fertilizer recommendations for cassava using existing and readily available site and farming information. The tool is intended for implementation of SSNM for cassava that could be used by crop advisors and extension agents. It does not require a lot of data or detailed information, but even farmers' knowledge can be adopted for use by the tool. The algorithm and the decision rules of Nutrient Expert are based on a large agronomic database representing multiple locations and diverse conditions. Agronomic database includes data on crop yield, varieties, yield responses to fertilizer application, crop residue management, soil characteristics, climate, and fertilizer application, such as data on the source, rate, and time of application. The general objective of this research is to enhance the productivity and profitability of cassava in Batangas and Pampanga using nutrient expert beta version. For study one, that is to compare the average cassava fresh and dry tuber yield, starch content, and net farmer's profit obtained from the farmer's fertilization practice and nutrient expert cassava beta version using Lacan 1, a farmer's preferred cassava food variety in Pampanga. And for the study to compare the fresh and dry tuber yield, starch content, and net farmer's profit obtained from FFP and NE using KU50, a cassava industrial variety preferred by farmers in Batangas. For the methodology, we started with site selection, followed by farmers' interview to generate the fertilizer recommendation using nutrient expert tool. Before planting, soil samples were collected from each farm. Soil texture was analyzed. Fertilization, weed control, and other agronomic practices were done. Monitoring was done via regular farm visits and phone calls with the farmer cooperators. Harvesting and data collection were done 10 months after planting together with soil sampling and analysis after subjecting the field into the fertilizer treatments. Simple economic analysis was done after. 
For Pampanga, the three farms are located at the municipality of Florida Blanca, which is located on the western part of Pampanga, within 14 degrees, 56 minutes north, and 120 degrees, 30 minutes east. It has a type 1 climate with an average annual rainfall of 2,428 millimeters and an annual average temperature of 27.3 degrees Celsius. The coolest month in the area is January with an average temperature of 25.9 degrees Celsius and the warmest month is in April with average temperature of 29 degrees Celsius. The soil type in the area is La Paz Lomi Fine Sand. There are also three farm sites in Nasubu, Batangas. The municipality is in the coastal areas of the province of Batangas within 14 degrees, 5 minutes, 51 seconds north, and 120 degrees, 35 minutes, 56 seconds east. It has also a type 1 climate, which is dry from November to April and wet from May to October with an average annual rainfall of 2,072 millimeters. The annual average temperature is 27.3 degrees Celsius, with the coolest month in January having an average temperature of 26.1 degrees Celsius. The warmest month is in April with an average temperature of 29 degrees Celsius. The soil type in the area is Taal, Representative soil samples are taken before planting and after harvesting across each treatment plot within the depth of 0 to 20 centimeters from at least 10 different spots. The samples were bulked together, air dried, sieved through a mesh of 2 millimeters, and Permitted to Institute of Plant Breeding, UPLB, for analysis. These are the parameters that were analyzed and the specific methods used for analysis. For the soil texture, the method that they used was the hydrometer method. Soil pH was determined using 1 is to 2 soil and water slurry using pH meter. Organic matter was measured using Wackley and Black method. Available phosphorus was measured using Bray number two method, and exchangeable potassium was measured using flame photometer method. Assessment of the soil chemical characteristics was done based on this table from the Cassava Handbook authored by Howler. In this table, soil pH, organic matter, available phosphorus and exchangeable potassium were classified based on the nutritional requirements of cassava with very low to very high terms of classification. During the farmer's interview, the data needed to generate the fertilizer recommendation using nutrient expert were obtained. The data were directly entered into the tool. Now, the agronomic data that were collected are shown in this Nutrient Expert Report. This is the Nutrient Expert Report from Pampanga, which captured the cassava current or usual yield obtained by the farmers, which is 35 tons per hectare, with an application of 83, 15, 75 kilograms of N, P205, and K20 per hectare. The timing of fertilizer application is split into two, wherein 14% of the nitrogen, full dose of phosphorus, and potassium is being applied at three months after planting. The remaining nitrogen is usually applied at four months after planting. Organic fertilizer application of 20 bags per hectare, which contains a total of 44, 10.5, 20.6 kg N, P205 and K20 per hectare is usually done before planting. 
The target yield or yield goal of 50 tons per hectare was set by the nutrient expert based on the current or usual yield of cassava in the area. Inside characteristics such as irrigation or, or water source, and some problems related to flooding, drought, and soil problems such as acidity or nutrient deficiency. Fertilizer recommended rate was set by the tool based on the target yield and estimated yield response of the crop based on the soil characteristics such as soil color, texture, and nutrient residue coming from the previous crop. The recommendation sheet that can be given to the farmers includes the target yield or yield goal, the suggested planting date, and plant spacing. It also includes the source and amount of fertilizers in bags, the timing of application, and recommendation for proper placement. This is the Nutrient Expert Report from Batangas. The cassava current or your sure yield obtained by the farmers is 15 tons per hectare with an organic fertilizer application of 185, 70, 70 kilograms of N, P2O5, K2O per hectare at two months after planting. Chicken manure of about 20 bags per hectare, which includes a total of 13, 11, 18 kilograms of nitrogen, P2O5, and K2O per hectare, is usually being applied in three splits at one, two, and three months after planting. The target yield or yield goal set by the nutrient expert is 30 tons per hectare, and this is the recommendation sheet. There were two treatments used in the field. Treatment 1 is for the application of the recommendation from the nutrient expert cassava with a field size of 1,000 square meters. Farmer's fertilization practice was followed for treatment 2 using the rest of the farmer's field. Experimental design that was used was completely randomized design with three crop cuts per treatment as the replicates. The food variety used in Pampanga is Lacan 1, which is planted at 1 by 1 meter plant spacing. The industrial variety used in Batangas was KO50 planted using 1 by 0.75 meter plant spacing. Fertilizers were applied to the plants according to treatments. Fertilizer rates, source, and time of application for treatment in Florida Blanca Pampanga are shown in this table. The total amount of NPK fertilizer applied in any treatment to achieve the target yield were higher than the FFP treatment. The inorganic fertilizers in the any treatment were applied earlier at one month and three months after planting than the FFP treatment which applied at three and four months after planting. The split application of inorganic NNK fertilizers were practiced in the any treatment, that is, half those of N and K on the first application and the remaining dose on the second application. Former corporators applied inorganic N fertilizers in two splits, that is less than one fourth dose on the first application and the remaining dose on the second. Moreover, former corporators applied inorganic P and K fertilizers once during the first application. Basal application of organic fertilizer was done for both treatments. On the other hand, in Nasigbu Batangas, the applications of N and P fertilizers were lessened and the application of K was increased in the N treatment to achieve the target yield. Split applications of inorganic N and K fertilizers were practiced in the N treatment, that is, half dose on the first application one month earlier than the FFP treatment, and the remaining dose on the second application. 
Pharma cooperators applied all the inorganic fertilizers at two months after planting. Moreover, split applications of organic fertilizer at one, two, and three months were done for both treatments. Planting was done from December 2018 to January 2019. First fertilizer application for the any treatment was done from January to February 2019. And the second application from March to April 2019. Farm visits and monitoring were done from July to August 2019. Harvesting and final soil sampling and analysis were done from October to November 2019. Unfortunately, one of the farms in Batangas was severely affected by white crops. In Pampanga, one of the farms was harvested early at six months after planting due to water logging. In addition, there were no reliable data that were collected from another farm in Pampanga because significant number of tubers were stolen from the any treatment plot. Data on the fresh tuber yield were obtained by doing three crop cuts per plot with 24 plants per crop cut. The yield per crop cut was converted to tons per hectare using this formula. Fresh root yield is equal to 10,000 square meters times the weight of the root harvested in kilograms divided by the area harvested in square meters. Data on the dry tuber yield and starch content were obtained using the specific gravity method from the Cassava Handbook of Howler. The formula for specific gravity method is shown below. The specific gravity is equal to the weight in air minus the weight in water divided by the weight in air. Dry matter content is equal to 158.3 times the specific gravity minus 142. Starch content is equal to 1.33165 times percent dry matter minus 24.306. For each crop cut, the weed in water of at least 1.4 kilograms of cassava tuber representative samples were obtained to calculate the specific gravity. Using the value of specific gravity, the dry matter content and the starch content were calculated using the formulas. For the civil economic analysis, data on the prices of fertilizers used, the farm gate price of the fresh cassava tubers, and secondary data from PSA were, were obtained. And the net benefit and the ROI, or return of investment, were calculated for each treatment. Data were analyzed with star 2.1 using ANOVA. Treatment means were compared with the LST method at 5% probability. For the results and discussion, let us look on the soil characteristics. In Florida Blanca Pampanga, for the initial soil fertility status, Data on the other two farms will not be presented because yield data were affected by water logging and significant number of tubers were stolen on the NE treatment plot. The soil pH was moderate. In terms of nutrient supplying capacity, the soil has moderate levels of organic matter and available phosphorus and high level of exchangeable potassium. This indicate good soil fertility level of the land. For the soil fertility status after harvest, the data on soil pH, organic matter, and available phosphorus were observed to be significantly lower than the values before planting for both the nutrient expert cassava beta version treatment and the farmer's fertilization practice treatments. Exchangeable potassium for both treatments have also relatively lower values after harvest, but remains to be at a high level. For instance, 
Mackinder and Agbula, cited by Virato et al. 2019, reported a decline in soil pH level when cassava was fertilized either by organic or by mineral fertilizer. Others reported that the use of mineral fertilizer increased soil pH. On the other hand, some of the fertilizers that were used in Florida Blanca Pampanga were ammonium phosphate and urea. Ammonium salts and urea can also contribute to soil acidification when it is converted to ammonium and nitrified as nitrate then leached to the soil. This might explain the slight acidification of the soil after applying those fertilizers. However, this still needs further research to know exactly what happened to the nitrogen content of the fertilizers, the amount of N uptaken by cassava, and the amount of N that was leached will be a valuable information. On the other hand, reduction of soil pH because of mineral fertilizer application is not a problem for cassava growers because cassava can tolerate acidic salt conditions. Cassava mobilizes large amount of nitrogen from the soil, which might explain the lower nitrogen level or lower organic matter level after harvest. The average tuber yield of five cassava varieties, according to the report of Ajay Shah, ranging from 17 to 36 tons per hectare, the average tuber yield of five cassava varieties, this can remove an average of 9 kilograms of nitrogen per ton of dry tubers. And since the soil texture in the area is loamy fine sand, there might be a loss of nitrogen through leaching. If the ammonium content of the fertilizers applied were converted to nitrate. Sandy soils have limited surface area for nutrient retention. Aside from nitrogen, the phosphorus and the potassium contents were also lower than the initial values because cassava is a heavy feeder of nutrients. That is, it can remove significant amount of plant nutrients with the root harvest. According to Holler, an average yield of 28.9 tons per hectare of fresh cassava tubers from 15 data sets removed 11 kilograms of phosphorus per hectare, while the whole plant removed 22.7 kilograms of phosphorus per hectare. For potassium, cassava tubers removed 88 kilograms per hectare, while the whole plant removed 156 kilograms per hectare. On the other hand, the lower values of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium after harvest could indicate that there was nutrient mining happened on the field. Note that the fertilizer recommendation set by the nutrient expert cassava beta version was for a target yield of 50 tons per hectare of fresh tubers. And the usual yield of farmers, given their usual fertilization practice, was 35 tons of fresh tubers per hectare. However, the expected yield of 50 tons of fresh tubers per, per hectare from any treatment and the yield of 35 tons per hectare of fresh tubers from the FFP treatment were both exceeded. And this might explain the reason why the crop mined nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium from the soil. For the initial soil fertility status of the farms in Asigbo, Batangas, only two farms will be presented because the yield data were affected by white crab infestation by almost 90%. For farm 1, the initial soil pH was 5.68. Based on the classification, according to Howler, the soil pH is moderate. In terms of nutrient supplying capacity, the soil has low level of organic matter, moderate level of available phosphorus, and high level of exchangeable potassium. This may indicate poor soil fertility in farm 1 
because of low levels of organic matter. After harvest, soybeans values were lower than the initial for both NE and FFP treatments. Higher level for organic matter was observed in the NE treatment, while for the FFP treatment, lower level than the initial value was observed. Available phosphorus of the NE treatment and the FFP treatment remains to be at the moderate level. For exchangeable potassium, higher levels were observed in both treatments. Now, unlike the result of soil analysis after harvest in Florida Blanco Pampanga, depletion of organic matter is observed only in the FFP treatment, which means even the farmers are relatively applying higher rates of nitrogen, there is or there are factors that might be causing the end level to be lost from the soil or not uptaken by the plants. One factor is the timing of fertilizer application. Farmers have only one time application of the inorganic fertilizers at two months after planting which could increase the risk of nitrogen losses through different routes such as immobilization, volatilization, nitrification, and leaching. The application rate of nitrogen by the farmers is relatively high at 185 kg nitrogen per hectare. According to, to different studies, about 50% at higher doses of applied nitrogen remains unavailable to a crop due to nitrogen loss through leaching. The split application of nitrogen after good establishment of a crop markedly reduce nitrogen losses. For farm 2, the initial soil pH was 5.08. Based on the classification, according to Howler, this soil pH is moderate. In terms of nutrient supplying capacity, the soil has moderate levels of organic matter and high levels of available phosphorus and exchangeable potassium. Now, after harvest in Farm 2, data on soil pH was higher for both treatments, but remains to be at the moderate level. Organic matter from the NE treatment remains to be at the moderate level, while for the farmer's fertilization practice treatment, it significantly decreased from moderate to low levels. Available phosphorus was lower for both treatments. Exchangeable potassium for NE and FFP treatments both remain to be at a high level after harvest. Now, one factor that might affect the differences in the findings related to the result of soil analysis after harvest in Farm 1 and Farm 2 is the siltation that happened in Farm 2 during the rainy season. The amount of nutrient content of soil particles that were transferred to the field might have something to do with a relatively lower level of nutrient in the field after harvest aside from the uptake of the plants and other possible losses. And because of these results, nutrient expert cassava beta version helped in preventing nutrient mining from the two farms in Nasagbu, Batangas. It increases the soil nitrogen level and retains the moderate levels of available phosphorus and high level of exchangeable potassium of the first farm. The two also helped in maintaining the moderate end level of the second farm. Now let us look on the data of cassava fresh, dry, sugar yield, and starch content. 
For the average fresh and dry tuber yields in starch content of cassava using Lacan 1 as a food variety in Florida Blanca Pampanga, the average fresh tuber yield of NE treatment was significantly higher than the FFP treatment by 17%. Same with the average dry tuber yield, the NE treatment was significantly higher than the FFP treatment by 25%. In addition, average starch content of the NE treatment was significantly higher than the FFP treatment by 33%. This shows that the fertilizer recommendation from the nutrient expert is effective in improving cassava sugar yield and starch content of Lacan 1 variety in this area. The common practice in the area is to harvest at six months after planting. Now, growing cassava for 10 months as recommended by NE could allow more growth on its tubers. So that from the usual 35 tons per hectare harvest of fresh tubers at six months after planting, farmers could attain 54 tons per hectare of fresh tubers using its current nutrient management practices. And this might explain that nutrient mining happened in the FFP treatment. Extension of the growing period of cassava might mean continuous bulking of cassava tubers requiring higher amount of nutrients. The factors that might explain the higher yield, which is 63 tons per hectare of fresh tubers obtained in the NE treatment, aside from increasing the fertilizer rates, are the proper timing and feeding of fertilizer application. The crop received enough nutrients from its early growth stage, that is at one to one and a half months after planting, which is when the true leaves of the cassava started to expand. The photosynthesis started to contribute positively to plant growth. A three months after planting, the crop received the recommended half dose of nitrogen and potassium, which is when the storage roots started to bulk. Split nitrogen application can produce higher nitrogen recovery efficiency by cassava shoots and roots, resulting to greater yields than one-time application. One-time application of all nitrogen during the early stage of the cassava growth could produce a greater number of tubers due to greater leaf area at tuber initiation, but the yields were low due to the lack of leaves during bulking. And because of that, time of application can significantly enhance N absorption at the time of critical nitrogen requirement of the crop. Applying the fertilizers at three months after planting, which is a common time for the first fertilizer application of the farmer cooperators, might be considered late as the crop already needs nutrients during its early growth. Moreover, low dose of nitrogen fertilizer being applied during the first fertilizer application might not be enough to support plant growth during the third time. This might lead to or this might lead to lower production of leaves that will affect the tuber growth on the later cassava growth stage. The NE, or the Nutrient Expert Cassava Beta Version Treatment, exceeded the yield goal of 50 tons per hectare of fresh tubers by attaining 60 tons per hectare of fresh tubers at 10 months after planting. This might also explain why nutrient mining also happened in this treatment. Therefore, it will be a great help if the softer or the tool could generate fertilizer recommendations adjusted on the farmer's preferred time of harvesting of cassava and not only for harvesting at 10 months after planting.
Can us now look at the average fresh and dry tuber yields and starch content of cassava using K of 50 in Farm 1 National Bubatangas. The average fresh tuber yield of any treatment was significantly higher than the FFT treatment by 47%. Same with the average dry tuber yield, the any treatment was significantly higher than the FFT treatment by 54%. In addition, average starch content of the NA treatment was significantly higher than the FFP treatment by 59%. This shows that the fertilizer recommendation from the NE is effective in improving cassava tuber yield and starch content of KU50 in this area. One of the factors that might explain the higher yields obtained from the NE treatment aside from proper timing and speeding of fertilizer application, is the balanced application of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Target yield of 30 tons per hectare of fresh tubers was attained by the NA treatment by lessening the application of nitrogen and phosphorus and increasing the application of potassium based on the estimated endogenous nutrient supply carry over nutrients from the previous crop and nutrients that came from the organic fertilizer applied. This means that the fertilizer recommended, recommended rate is sufficient in achieving the target yield. Yield goal of 30 tons per hectare of fresh tubers was exceeded by almost 2 tons per hectare, given a lower recommended rate for N and P and higher recommended rate for K, which shows that balanced fertilization is promoted by the rent expert is effective. Following the fertilizer recommendation from NE based on SSNM approach could be an additional advantage as such recommendation yielded significantly more tubers than the usual practice. Same with farm one, one of the factors that might explain the higher yields obtained from the nutrient expert cassava beta version treatment, aside from proper timings and speeding of fertilizer application, is the balanced application of N, P, and K in Farm 2. You can see that in the NA treatment, tuber yields, fresh and dry, and starch content were higher in the NE treatment than the EFFP treatment. So now, let's look on the simple economic analysis. Now for Pampanga, the farm gate price of cassava fresh tuber yield is 13 pesos per kilogram. Significant increase in net profit was obtained in applying the fertilizer recommendation based on the nutrient expert cassava by 112,750 pesos and 50 centavos per hectare or 70% increase because of higher fresh tuber yields. Despite that, any treatment has higher fertilizer costs than the FFP treatment. The net benefit cost ratio, which is the amount earned by the farmer, for every peso spent in production of the FFP treatment is higher than the NE treatment because of lower cost of fertilization. Although the net benefit cost ratio of any treatment is lower because of higher fertilization cost, the benefit can still be realized by minimizing or preventing nutrient mining from the soil in the long run by following the fertilizer recommendation based on the SSNM approach. The net benefit cost ratio of the any treatment might improve on the next cropping season, although this needs another experimental trial of one or two on the same area to be able to clearly see the results. One factor to consider in growing cassava is that growing it from year to year in the same piece of land without proper or enough fertilizer application could lead to nutrient mining. Same thing that happened on this experiment in which the organic matter, phosphorus, and potassium level of the soil decreased for both NE and FFP treatments. 
The practice of not applying balance and enough nutrients for crop fruit might result to lower yields in the long run. The fertilizer recommended to eat for 10 months growing period of cassava is underestimated since the tool used the current or usual cassava yield after 6 months harvesting time as the basis for the attainable yield and fertilizer recommendation. From 35 tons per hectare of fresh tubers, it might come up with another estimated attainable yield. For example, from 50 tons per hectare estimated attainable yield, it might be 60 tons per hectare of fresh tubers. If the tool can predict what would be the yield if farmers will practice 10 months after planting harvesting time with the same fertilization practice. In Batangas, both for Farm 1 and Farm 2, the fertilizer cost of the any treatment is cheaper than the FFP treatment. The farm gate price of cassava is 10 pesos per kilogram. Significant increase in the net profit was obtained by applying the fertilizer recommendation generated from NE by 108,941 pesos per hectare or 60% increase. And this was attributed to the increased fresh tuber yield and lower fertilizer cost. The net benefit cost ratio in the NE treatment was higher than the FFP treatment. That is, for every 1 peso farmers spent in production, farmers could earn 10 pesos and 70 centavos by following the NE recommendation, and only 5 pesos and 30 centavos by retaining its usual practice. Since another an expert treatment fertilizer rate is lower than the fertilizer rate of the FFP treatment, this would mean that satisfying the cassava nutrient requirements without too much application of nutrients and just applying balanced supply of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, cassava could attain higher yields and profit. Same with Farm 1 and Farm 2, increase in net profit was obtained in applying the fertilizer recommendation generated by the NE by 123,941 pesos. And the net benefit cost ratio of the any treatment was higher than the FFP treatment. Uh, for the conclusion and recommendation, results of one from trials of the NE for the Salva beta version significantly increase the cassava fresh and dry tuber yields, large intent and net profit by about 17, 25, 33, and 16% respectively with Can 1 variety in Pampanga, and about 47 to 62%, 51 to 54%, 46 to 59%, and 60% respectively with KO50 variety in Batangas. This could mean the Titanet Expert for Cassava Beta version is effective in generating fertilizer recommendations based on SSNM that could increase cassava farmers' yields and crop. For recommendations, there are four. For the first one, further research on the development of SSNM using any for cassava beta version should be done to make sure that all the agronomic data and side characteristics of cassava farms are over the Philippines, such as data on attainable yield of different cassava varieties and responses to fertilizer application based on climate, fertility, and other factors that are important to consider in developing fertilizer recommendations. Second, data on the nutrient uptake of cassava would also be of help in determining how much of the N, P, and K went to the cassava leaves, stems, and tubers of cassava to further effectively predict or calculate the residual N, P, and K left in the farms after harvest. Third, fertilizer use efficiency studies must also be done to be able to further improve and adjust the nutrient algorithms of the tool. And lastly, 
Soil analysis should also be done on the samples at 20 to 50 centimeters effective depth. To be able to also analyze the behavior of salt characteristics up to the 50 centimeters effective breathing depth of cassava. Okay, that's it. Thank you for listening. I would like to acknowledge uh, UPLB and DA Bar for uh, giving me a chance to be part of the site specific nutrient management project in the Philippines. Thank you.